Takshashila, Nalanda and Vikramshila. These are the three universities that academicians and politicians talk about when they talk about ancient knowledge and wisdom from India. Well, Nalanda is one such university which got a second chance and opened its doors to students once again. While the university was started in 2014 itself, the operation started back then, uh, it did not have a permanent campus of its own. It finally got one in 2019 and we are here today at the Nalanda University campus to understand how it has imbibed the culture and the essence from the older university and how the infrastructure and academics has been amalgamated into the new one. The first thing that will strike you once you enter the campus is how the structure is being built very similar to the historic Nalanda University which now lies in ruins 10 kilometers away from the current campus in Rajgir. The older university campus, now called the Nalanda Ruins, is a present-day tourist attraction which used to receive almost 2,000 to 4,000 visitors per day pre-pandemic. According to the history of the university, it was a completely residential university believed to have 2,000 teachers and 10,000 students. It attracted scholars from China, Korea, Japan, Tibet, Mongolia, Turkey, Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia. These scholars have left records about the maintenance, ambience, architecture and learning at this university. The most detailed accounts have come from Chinese scholars. The design and the theme of the old Nalanda has been kept in mind while designing the architecture and academic theme of the new university. There are two huge water bodies on the campus that surround the recreational area and commercial complex still under construction. Administrative block, teaching block, faculty building and auditorium are some of the buildings that are fully ready and are being used. The buildings have thick walls and very high ceilings, emulating the historic Nalanda structure. Even the classrooms have been designed with open spaces on either side so as to facilitate discussion in between lectures. I have Professor Sunaina Singh with me who took over as the Vice Chancellor of Nalanda University in 2017 and since then so much has changed on the campus. This is a new campus that we are sitting in, new campus building, the infrastructure has uh, uh, grown leaps and bounds and in fact there are a lot of academic uh, development also as well. Welcome to the print Professor. So, so the question I was asking was you know Nalanda, when you hear the word history comes to your mind, history, culture and we can see a lot of it on the campus as well. Uh, congratulations to you on that. Uh, I wanted to understand how you've tried to assimilate that culture, history in terms of both infrastructure and academics on, on the campus in the new Nalanda as we are talking about. Yeah. Well, the illustrious history of ancient Nalanda continues to inspire us, you know, uh, all the academicians I would say and perhaps all the university heads uh, when they talk about Nalanda or think about Nalanda they, uh, the, the image of a Vishwaguru comes to mind an uh, institution that was complete in itself it was the first organized institution uh, where there were a number of international students uh, you know uh, seeking in, in quest of knowledge who traveled all the way to Nalanda. Uh, I, I thought since Nalanda, ancient Nalanda was a beacon of hope and knowledge and attracted uh, uh, the seekers of knowledge from all over, the new Nalanda also needs to be molded in that fashion. So um, the most important thing here is uh, the world that we need to craft for the new generation, to my mind, has to be based on collaborations, linkages, internationalism, where we all learn to come together on one platform. So an educational institution needs to embark on that mission, particularly given the vision of International Nalanda University. Uh, we have about 17 countries uh, who have signed a memorandum of agreement with Ministry of External Affairs uh, uh, for the uh, re-establishment of Nalanda. My courses therefore are very sure. niche. Uh, 
uh, and we try to assimilate and uh, mold ourselves while we are not a recreation of ancient Nalanda. Uh, the, the glory of ancient Nalanda cannot be recreated in that sense. But how we reinvent ourselves in the new avatar is completely, uh, you know, that, that's the mission, that's the vision. After starting with just 12 students in 2014, the university now has 500 students including 200 international students from countries like Bhutan, Cambodia, Thailand, Nepal, among others. A research-driven university, it offers courses in Buddhist studies, Hindu studies, ecology and environment studies, management in sustainable development, among others. It also has some short-term programs in Korean, Sanskrit, English, Pali and Tibetan. Buddha studies is one of the most popular programs of the university apart from historical studies. My name is Seong Duma and I am from Bhutan okay. and I am pursuing MA in historical studies. So my experience out here, uh, like initially it was very difficult because I came from a very small country. It, it was my first time here, but now as time passes, now everything is like going well. And Nalanda, you know, like it was really great, even in ancient as well as it is like carrying its name and like the yes, experience here, you know, I would say that I have learned so many things, not only just from the course, but to deal with people, the exposure here, and like I'm studying in historical studies, but I'm also like you know, ex I mean, given an opportunity to like uh, what to say now, take other courses like Buddhist ecology. So it's such an open field for me. So I feel now lucky. Earlier it was very difficult for me. Everything, the culture and everything, food, especially food. But now everything is fine. Okay. And like today we are performing here to celebrate you know the Azadi, 75th Azadi. I'm Nam Gidoji and I'm from Bhutan and uh, the, I'm pursuing MA in Historical Studies currently in first year. So my experience out here is I'm very privileged to be one of the students of Nalanda University this year because like the courses that they offer out here are very interesting and the example like I have more interest in cultural field so I get every opportunity to learn about culture which talks about India as well as other neighboring nations. It was your undergrad from India or is it the first time that you Yes, it's my first time in studying in India. Okay. So how are you finding the culture, the country, people, everything? All the religious neighbors. So. Yes. Um, during first of first couple of, couple of months, it was very difficult to accommodate out here because the nature seems different and the environments are very different. The people, the how we interact with each other is very different. And after staying here for around two months now, the and on like four months I have been staying here. I feel comfortable with people around and I get to learn more about their culture and interact with each other. And I can share them my culture also and I learn about their culture, which makes me uh, easier to live here. Uh, this is Anusha from Thailand. Yes. Uh, how how's your experience been studying in Nalanda? And like a lot of others said that initially they had kind of a little, you know, adjustment period. So was was it the same for you also? Did you take a little time to adjust here? For me, it takes actually a lot of time to adjust to the new environment here, especially the food because back in Thailand we mostly consume non-veg food. Okay. But ever since I've been here, there are a lot of veg food, vegetarian food, which I personally I don't consume that much. Okay. So I find it a little bit difficult at the beginning, but now it's all set. Yeah, it's nice vibe. Yeah. So you're liking, enjoying the veg food now? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> what about the study environment, the cultural environment over here? What are you studying? Yeah, I'm pursuing my master's in historical study also, yeah. But actually my bachelor's degree background was in another field which is business management. Oh wow, that, that's a very interesting shift. How did that shift happen? <laughs> it's uh, basically because of my passion, I always wanted to come to India to explore my own religion which is Buddhism. So everything happens here, uh, the Kichakuta mountain, the place where the Buddha declared his first teachings and everything was around here, it's not so far. I can go to those places and explore the culture and learn from the spot on the spot. So I think it's really good 
it's been really good experience so far for me. I'm Pabisra Purnampiruma. I'm from Sri Lanka. Uh, I uh, I here study uh, MA in World Literature. Okay. It's a really interesting course. I uh, I would say uh, we are like learning about uh, literature. Okay. And this is my first time I study in uh, India. Okay. It's a really uh, good experience. I would say like uh, beforehand I studied at uh, Sri Lanka. Okay. Yeah. We have taken, drawn yeah. from ancient Nalanda. Uh, it, it continues to inspire. I keep looking at the courses, uh, the kind of integrative knowledge that was that emerged. All our courses are integrative. I have a cafeteria model where my sustainable development students can do a course from world literature or Buddhist studies or uh, peace studies. They can, they, they can earn extra credits by doing additional courses. With Manisha Mondal from the Nalanda University campus in Rajgir, Bihar, this is Kritika Sharma for The Print.